In this video, we are going to talk about intuition and terminology of one of the most widely used dimensionality reduction techniques called principal component analysis, PCA for short. PCA was first invented in 1901, and it's been around for a long, long time. You can think of this analogy of PCA is to unsupervised learning as linear regression to supervised learning. There are tons and tons of applications of PCA. For example, the big five personality traits were discovered using PCA. Psychologists applied PCA on Twitter and blog post data, and they found that personalities boil down to these five dimensions. The famous hockey stick curve of global warming was also created by applying PCA on various temperature-related time series. In the previous video, we said that dimensionality reduction techniques summarize the data. Principal component analysis summarizes the data by finding linear combinations of features. In fact, PCA finds the best linear combinations of the original features so that the first newly created feature, which is the first component, has the most information or most variance from the data and the second newly created feature, that is second component, has the second most information, and so on. What do we mean by finding the best linear combinations? Let's look at an example. Let's create some two-dimensional toy data. This is our first dimension, x1, and this is our second dimension, x2. And these are our data points. Do we really need two dimensions to describe these data points? Not really, right? All these points seem to be passing through this black line. And if you rotate the x-axis or think of this black line as your x-axis, you will be able to describe each point with just one number without losing any information, right? So you don't really need two dimensions here and you should be okay with just one dimension. Now let's add some noise to this data. So this is our data now with some noise. Now the colors here don't really mean anything. I'm just giving colors to points so that it will be easy for us to keep track of these points. So this is our toy data with two features, x1 and x2. Our goal is to reduce dimensionality. We want to go from two features to one feature. What if we just drop one of the features? That's what we did in feature selection, right? What if we drop column X1? If we drop column X1, then what would happen? We would lose all this horizontal information and all our points will be projected on the X2 axis. These red points are our projections and we are losing all this horizontal information here. Similarly, what would happen if we drop column X2? Now we will lose all this vertical information and all data points will be projected on the X1 axis. Now, instead of dropping columns and losing all information from these columns, how about finding an optimal line going through these data points and projecting our data points on this optimal line? This sounds familiar, right? Finding an optimal line going through data points means finding the best linear combinations of features. Let's explore this idea. I'm starting with this black line with angle zero. These are our original data points and we are projecting them on this black line. These red points are our projections. Now we are losing all this vertical information here and this is the same as dropping X2 axis. I'm also showing you something called reconstruction error. What is it? Our overall goal is reducing dimensionality without losing much information. So we want these projected points as close as possible to the original points. How can we quantify this? One way to quantify this is by measuring the distance between projections and original data points. And this reconstruction error 
is sum of the squared distances between original points and projected points. I'm slowly going to change the angle of this black line now and I want you to observe how the distances between projected points and original points change and how the reconstruction error changes. Let's try this out. For angle 0, the reconstruction error is 10. If we increase this angle, the reconstruction error is going down, which is good news, right? This is progress compared to just dropping this x2 feature. If we keep increasing this angle, our reconstruction error is still going down. Now, when the angle is around 45 degrees, our reconstruction error is pretty low, 0 0.59. And the projected points and the original points are also pretty close to each other. If we still keep increasing the angle, now we see that the reconstruction error has started going up again. And the reconstruction error becomes bigger and bigger because the distances between projected points and the original points, they are growing. So at 45 degrees, we found an optimal line where projected points are as close as possible to the original data points. And that's the overall idea of PCA. Instead of just dropping columns, it's going to find this optimal line for you, which is going to be a linear combination of your features. It's a linear model. So it's going to find this linear combination of features. If you stare at this plot for a while, or if you play around with it, you will notice that minimizing the reconstruction error is kind of similar to maximizing variance of these projected points. What do I mean? At this angle of 45 degrees, our reconstruction error is 0 0.59 and our projected points are well spread out here. If we increase the angle, our reconstruction error is going up for this angle of 123 degrees our reconstruction error is pretty high. It's 18.59. And we see that our projected points are kind of squished and they are not as spread out as before. So PCA learns a linear model, that is lines, planes, or hyperplanes, which minimizes the reconstruction error or maximizes the variance of the projected points. We will look at the actual loss function later, but first let's understand some terminology associated with PCA. I'm creating scikit-learn's PCA object here. I'm passing n components equal to one because our original toy data has two dimensions and we want to reduce dimensionality from two dimensions to one dimension. When we call fit on this PCA object, what's going to happen? It's going to find this optimal line where reconstruction error between projected points and the original points is minimum or the variance between projected points is maximum. So this black line is the learned model by PCA. These blue points are our original data points and red points are the projections. The original data points are usually referred to as X. The reconstructions, these red points are usually referred to as X hat. And this black line is our PCA model. It learns this W vector, that is coefficients or weights associated with these two features. That was about two dimensional data. We were trying to reduce dimensionality from two dimensions to one dimension. What if we have more than two dimensions? Let's look at an example with three dimensional data. This is our three dimensional data. We have three features, X1, X2, and X3. And these are our data points in our 3D space. Suppose we want to reduce dimensionality from three dimensions to two dimensions. So I'm creating PCA object with n components equal to two. And here is our PCA model. These blue points are our original data points in 3D space. And PCA now has learned this plane, this green plane. 
because we have passed n components equal to 2. Before, we had two-dimensional data and the PCA model learned a line because we passed n components equal to 1. Now we are reducing dimensionality from three dimensions to two dimensions. So it has learned this green plane. And these pink or purple points are the projections of original data points on this plane. Let's try to understand PCA input and output step by step on a data set with more than two dimensions. Let's bring back our nutritional value of pizza toy data set. This is our data set. We have 300 rows and seven columns. I'm scaling the data with standard scalar and my scale data is in X pizza scaled. What's the input of PCA? PCA is used for dimensionality reduction, right? So we need to specify how much reduction do we want. Here I'm doing that using this variable called n components. When I create my PCA object, I pass this value to n components attribute. When I call fit on the PCA object, I'm passing the scale data. So that's the input of PCA. We pass the scale data and we need to specify how much reduction do we want. The output of PCA are two matrices. This Z matrix with projected data and this W matrix with weight vectors associated with each principal component. Let's look at these matrices one by one. First, I'm creating this Z matrix by calling transform on our PCA object. Again, I'm passing the scale data here. And this is how our transform data looks like as a data frame. What's the shape of this data? We have 300 rows similar to the original data, but instead of having seven columns, now we just have two columns here. We have these newly created features, which can be thought of as the summary of the original seven features. So this is our new representation. This is our transformed data. This is our projected data. Let's look at the W matrix. In scikit-learn, we can access this W matrix with components underscore attribute of the PCA object. And this is how this W matrix looks like as a data frame. What's the shape of the W matrix? In our case, we have two principal components and seven original features. And for each principal component, this model learns coefficients or weights associated with each of the original features. So the shape of W is going to be two, that is the number of components, and seven, which is the number of features in the original data. And each of these principal components can be thought of as a linear combination of these features. More formally, suppose the original data matrix X has N rows and D columns, that is D features. And we want to reduce dimensionality from D dimensions to K dimensions. So we specify the number of components as K. Usually this K is way smaller than D. For example, suppose you are applying PCA on image data. In the original raw data, you might have each feature representing a pixel in the image. So you will have thousands of dimensions. But the most important information might occur in the first 20 or 50 principal components. So this K is usually way smaller than D. Now Z has our transform data. What's the shape of Z? Z has N rows and K columns. In our original data, we had N rows and Z also has N rows. But in our original data, we had D columns and Z has only K columns. We have reduced dimensionality here and we only have K columns now. And this is our W matrix. What's the shape of this matrix? We have K rows, one for each principal component, and we have D columns, one for each of the original features. For each principal component, we have a row, and for each principal component, there is a 
coefficient associated with each of the original features. How do we interpret these coefficients? This is a linear model, right? PCA learns a linear model. So we can interpret these coefficients similar to linear regression. In particular, if a coefficient is positive, it means that the feature and the component are positively correlated. And if it's negative, it means that they are negatively correlated. Higher magnitude of the coefficient means the feature has a strong effect on the corresponding principal component. Let's look at an example. This is a graphical representation of our W matrix. We have two principal components, PCA1 and PCA2. And for each of the principal components, there is a coefficient associated with each of the features. In our picture, amount of carbohydrates feature has a negative coefficient, which means that PCA1 and amount of carbohydrates are negatively correlated with each other. Whereas amount of ash feature has a positive coefficient, which means that amount of ash and PCA1 are positively correlated with each other. In dimensionality reduction, unlike feature selection, we are not exactly throwing away features. We can reconstruct our original data X, of course with some error, by multiplying the transform data Z and the weight matrix W. Let's try this out. This is our transform data Z. What's the shape of transform data? We have 300 rows and two columns. So the shape is 300 by two. And this is our weight matrix. What's the shape of this weight matrix? We have two rows and seven columns. So the shape of this is going to be two by seven. So if we multiply Z by W, what's going to be the shape of our resultant matrix? It's going to be 300 by seven, right? So here I'm multiplying Z by W and this is our X pizza hat. I'm calling this reconstructed data X pizza hat. This looks like our original data, right? We have 300 rows and seven columns. Instead of multiplying the matrices on our own, we can also call this method called inverse transform on our PCA object in scikit-learn to get the reconstructed data. So this reconstructed data is exactly the same as this data when we multiplied Z and W. More formally, what are we doing here? How are we reconstructing the data? This is our Z matrix. This is our transform matrix. The shape of this matrix is N by K. We have N rows and K columns. And this is our W matrix. The shape of this W matrix is K by D. For each principal component, we have a row here and for each principal component there is a weight associated with each of the original features so there are d columns here when we multiply this z matrix by w matrix what's going to be the shape of the resultant matrix the shape of the resultant matrix is going to be n by d right and this is our reconstructed data how good is the reconstructed data Let's compare our reconstructions with the original scale data. This is our original scale data, and these are our reconstructions. As we can see, there are some differences between the values in these two data frames, but they do not seem too far off from each other. One way to quantify how far off our projections or reconstructions are from the original data is by calculating squared distances between original data points and reconstructed data points. Let's try that out. These are our reconstruction errors. That is, these are our squared differences between reconstructions and projections. What do we see? The reconstruction error is different for different examples. One way to summarize these reconstruction errors would be by taking their mean or median. In our case, the median is 0 0.295. How to interpret this number? It will depend upon the context, and I'm not really going into it right now. What did we see in this video? We talked about PCA intuition and terminology. 
PCA is one of the most widely used dimensionality reduction techniques. What's the overall idea? The overall idea is projecting high dimensional data to low dimensional space to create this new representation, which can be thought of as the summary of the original data. PCA applies a linear transformation on the data, so it's called linear dimensionality reduction technique. What are the inputs and outputs of PCA? As input, it takes number of components and scale data. And as output, it results in two matrices, the transform data matrix Z and the weight matrix W. A nice thing about PCA is that we can reconstruct the original data with some error, of course, by multiplying Z and W matrices. And that's all for this video.